Okay. Well, hello, everybody. It's Dr. Hank, and welcome to Agent Wealth Success. And you know what we do here. We help agents and brokers in real estate to increase their business and their wealth. And, you know, every week I have the top people on in the industry and the top people in um, uh, the top brokers, top agents. Last week, we had the number one apartment uh, buyer in America, number one apartment um, mentor in America. And, uh, you know, I've been sharing, but this week is really going to be special because I've been talking to you about on the importance of understanding social media, to being out there, to really be giving a good image on that. And so I have with us today the number one lady that knows on the social media, Karen Albert. And Karen, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much, doctor. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yeah, you are just awesome and that uh, you specialize with real estate agents and help them increase their business big time. And I just love that. So let's start a little general first and let's talk about the social media presence and the brand impacts on why that impacts our success. And we're agent well success, so we're all about success. And like, why do I need that as a real estate agent or broker? Why do I need that presence on the social media in order to be more successful? Can you help us understand, get our head around that? <laughs> yes, thank you so much. That's a great question, actually. It's one that I get asked quite a lot. And yeah. uh, the best way I like to answer that is really just kind of going directly to some case studies and some examples that I've had. And so I have, as a result of working with real estate agents and helping them understand the importance of increasing their online presence and brand and getting their community engaged and them really adding value to their community, that yeah. that has uh, increased their business like tenfold. But wow. the flip side, I've also had agents tell me that they've lost business as a result of that. They've actually had prospects come to them and say, we would have gone with you, but we actually chose to go with another agent because they did their investigation and looked at the agent's social media presence. And so the other agent had thousands of followers. They were very engaged. They felt that the content, they saw these agents were actually using social media mm -hmm. to promote their product and service, right? Uh, so yeah. the agent's product is not themselves. It's their customer's real estate. And so if you are showing your customer's product, right, mm -hmm. on social media, effectively, high quality, good content, and the community is engaged with what you're sharing, mm -hmm. that's something that your client is going to take into consideration, especially a selling agent. Wow. You know, I mean, a seller, right? So they're going to want to know, are you, do you know how to take my property and right. effectively promote it online through the social media? Yeah. Putting it on to MLS and Zillow and all of that's one thing. But it's gone so much farther than that, that your customer is going to expect it. Uh -huh. They're going to look at it and check you out and see. Yeah. So it's critical. You bet. You bet. Yeah, like I uh, know you've been working with me. And so I also, I've, I've tried the product, you, if you will. And like, <laughs> you're just awesome. And oh, you make it all you. shiny and everything. <laughs> and uh, way better than I really am. <laughs> and uh, and like I say, why, why you're behind the curtain, the name of your co company, you should really be in front of the curtain because you're beautiful. But <laughs> can you help us understand uh, the importance of knowing our target audience and what is our target audience when we're using social media? Yeah, it's such a great question. And you know, it's actually really whenever I'm doing any educating or public speaking or anything, I always start out with point number one is understanding your target market. And the majority of agents that I work with, and this, I love this part of working with agents is kind of unpacking that target market because they tend to, as most business owners do, market themselves to everybody. So yeah. the challenge with that is, I like to equate that to like marketing to the ocean, right? Which is really <laughs> big and broad. And so you're this little fish and you're swimming around amongst all the other fish in the ocean, which are probably your competition as well. But what I like to do is I like to fatten up the clients and make them a big fish. The way I do that is not by fattening them up, but what I do is I reduce the body of water, right? So I equate that to a well, which is very narrow and very deep. And probably anybody that's in niche marketing yeah. knows the whole concept of finding the niche or finding the well. And yeah. a lot of times when I work 
work with agents, they are like, well, how do I know what that well is? And the fun part about that is helping them to look at, so the exercise that I go through is I help them look at, so let's look at, look back at your existing customers. So for seasoned agents, this is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Sort of look at what are the top 10 customers that you would write down right now if you could come come to the top of your head, write down the top 10. And yeah. then let's look at the similarities that they have. So mm -hmm. are they married? Are they single, right? What's their race, their gender? Are they parents, newlyweds? Mm -hmm. Where do they live? Like really kind of see where their similarities are. And it's really amazing. Every time I do this exercise, there's an yeah. aha moment where they're like, I yeah. never realized that that's actually who I was servicing because okay. that's who they're attracting. Mm -hmm. Right. It's all about that's what that's what you want to work with. So why not continue to work with those that you want to attract anyways? Mm -hmm. And then you look at like psychographics. And so where do they like to spend their time and their money? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's important stuff to know, too, because if you if you can craft that target market and you get really clear on who they are, yeah. then you can get really clear on that, like the needs that you're solving. Like, how are you solving an issue for them? Mm -hmm. um, an example that I'll give you is uh, when I was back in Los Angeles there was an agent that I worked with and he was new. He was only a few months into it. So that exercise was challenging for him, right? So he was like, I don't have top 10 existing. So I said, all right, well, let's kind of look at you then. So let's look at sort of what are you passionate about and what is it that would really help you want to kind of pull that, that specialness, your unique differentiator, right, out. Oh. And so we discovered that he was an absolute avid animal lover, like loved yeah, pets. Yeah. <laughs> he and his wife were, you know, newlyweds, so they had a couple of dogs, and they spent their times at parks and dog parks, and they were foster parents to two little kittens and <laughs> donated, to, you know, the uh, um, animal shelters and all of that stuff, yeah. and so... Um, basically what we ended up doing for him is we branded him as the real estate agents to the animal lovers. So oh he traded God. his Jetta in for a forerunner, Toyota forerunner, transformed the whole back of his car into <laughs> yeah. the ideal transportation for a pet. He had the leashes, the water, the treats, oh uh, the carrying case for a small animal in case they wanted to take these pets on the home shopping experience, right? Wow. And so he, <laughs> that's who he became. He was Joe, the, the real estate expert to the pet lovers. And so he then made it his point to learn like where are the best neighborhoods for pets and where are the dog parks and where are the best homes. And, yeah. and, and then guess who he started to then connect with and collaborate with as those business partners that were already connected with that target market, mm -hmm. the vets, right? Yeah, got right? It. So, right. So basically we kind of figured that out first and then I created that as his online brand. So all of his wow. graphics, his taglines, his logos, <laughs> everything and all of his social media was basically getting in front of that particular demographic. And that, and I mean, that's, you know, that, that just kind of helps in terms of understanding, like, let's just take a step back first to make sure that you aren't a little fish in a big ocean. Let's right. find a whale and make you a big fish. Right. I like that. And a big fish, I like thinking about whales. So let's kind of think about yeah. Hey, we want to be a whale. So how yeah. to become how to become a whale? Because that agent you're referring to became a whale. And can you just share with us on, like, about how much business or whatever? Do you have any business results you could share with us about that? Oh yeah, I'm yeah, absolutely. I mean, he became like the number two in his office within the first year. I mean, oh. really, really successful. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's and it fantastic. also the geographical area too was West Los Angeles. So. Uh -huh. it, may not be familiar with that, but I mean, everybody has a dog, everybody has a pet, they love to go outdoors, everybody's yeah. outdoors, right? So yeah. it was, um, and it was, it was his passion at the same time. So we weren't yeah, trying to yeah. recreate and carve something out of something that wasn't authentic for him, yeah, you know? Yeah. Mm. So when you really tap into something that's authentic, I'll give you another example is okay. that there was a woman and um, she was, uh, she had been in real estate for a few years. Mm. She was a single mom, but her kids were finally off and one was in high school and a couple were off in college. Mm. Um, and so we kind of spent some time really kind of unpacking that. What do you, what difference do you want to make? Like, who do you want to serve? And, uh, and she said, I just know as a single mom, the challenge that I had with, with, um, you know, having babysitters or care, care 
caretakers for my children if I ever wanted to do anything. Right. So she basically uh, became the agent to the single moms and she hired a woman that basically was fully licensed, fully bonded, full background check. And she would either leave them with the kids at home and paid for it. The agent paid for it all. Or the kids could come and she would have this woman come on the road with them to go and at properties and stuff as well. Yeah. And so it, a lot of it is really like, where's a problem or a pain yeah. that you know how to solve? Yeah. Just because yeah. you're in real estate doesn't mean that there are other ways that you can go about producing, yeah. right? And, yeah. and servicing your target market. So yeah. that's a huge pain that she was able to identify. You bet. And so I love that, Karen, that um, you, you basically have, have helped us understand that social media, you need a presence there. And that's how uh, that, that you literally win or lose based on your presence there. And as I think about that, that, you know, I think about like, if I'm looking at, I, I'd like to see productive agents and agents, you know, that really want to, again, and I, I, sure enough, I thought to myself, oh yeah, I check Facebook and I do a search on them and see how they look, if you will. And so it really is your appearance on, on how you, on the social media then to understand so we're kind of you know whittling this down we understand the purpose now we understand our target audience and better understand that we develop a niche and i really like thinking about that niche about what is your passion like i love this dog story because yeah they loved dogs and there's uh, this new dog uh program Tibor, I think it's called, uh, Tibor, T-I-B-A. It's kind of like the dog whisperer and takes okay. care of dogs, you know, and he's just become wildly successful and, and you know, whatever. And uh, and so so we're, we're getting this. And to be clear, everybody, that, you know, I want you to take notes and I want you to think about what your passion is yeah. on who your target audience is, on what you need to do. And again, Karen is going to offer us just an amazing offer here in a little while on she's going to in essence, give away our services for you to to help you get to this elevated place that you want. And uh, But we're going to give you some real good meat. And in fact, the next thing I'm going to ask you, Karen, is what are typically the common mistakes? There's probably a handful of common mistakes that we as real estate professionals uh, do almost every day in social media. And so can you help us a little with what not to do? We know now what to do, what not to do. <laughs> well, and, you know, part of that actually goes back to the first point is that they go go onto social media and they are just sort of posting everything about who they are and what they're doing. And they're not really taking into consideration who they're talking to. Uh -huh. And they're not taking into consideration is, 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 are the words that I'm using actually attracting a particular market that I'm interested in attracting? And so if we go back to those examples of like Joe, right. Or the agent who was took care of the care, the kids, right. yeah. um, when you know who it is that you're talking to, mm -hmm. the power then becomes you know what the words are to say mm -hmm. to speak to that market. So when we were crafting Joe, for example, his message on social media wasn't, hey, I'm this eight great agent and these are my listings and this is what I can do for you as an agent. It was, hey, pet lovers, guess what? There's this amazing new park that just opened up and I just took 10 of my clients there at a park and a picnic, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Really crafting that creative message. So, But you have to start with step one is who is your target market and who yeah. are you talking to? And then when you get clear on that, then you get clear on the problem that you're solving. Uh -huh. Social media platforms are just marketing tools. Mm -hmm. And so you could be on there that like, you know, you're just a hamster in the wheel and you're posting and saying stuff all day long about how you are and how great you are. Yeah. And it's like a tree falls in the woods. Yeah. But until you figure out who you're talking to and, the, and who you want to attract yeah. and how you can solve and address that issue, Okay. Then you want to start looking at the top social media platforms and not every market is on the top social media platform either. So you want to kind of, again, who's your market and then you look at where do they live on the internet? So uh, maybe you're not on Facebook or maybe yeah. they are more on Instagram or maybe they're, maybe they're a Twitter community. Mm -hmm. And so at me as a social media strategist, 
I'm not only a strategist in terms of helping my customers and agents really kind of create that niche and brand for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's also important for me to know the strategy behind each of the social media platforms uh -huh. so that when you're using it, you understand, okay, strategically, this is how you want to be using this platform because every platform has that uh, infamous algorithm right? Mm -hmm. That's running behind the scenes and it's actually controlling who sees what you're doing. Wow. So I know how to kind of feed the algorithm, quote unquote, Ooh. strategically. <laughs> now, once we figure out who we want to get in front of, then we figure yeah. out which social platforms we want to use. And uh. then, and then, you know, when in working with the agents, I teach them then yeah. how to use yeah. those, those tools strategically to get in front of that market. Well, if I could give a testimonial on that, that um, so when I give a post uh, in the old days before you, uh, I get maybe seven posts. If I did a picture of my dog, Bella, I'd get over a hundred. But yeah. with you, I have one post that went out and I had over 5,000 likes. And so that's the magic in you understanding the algorithms. And now for all of us to understand, yeah. you, you need to understand, once you understand your, your target audience, that now you understand who would be best under which social media would be best. And one example that I know on some data that I just read uh, yesterday is that like Instagram, it is huge and big, but it's big and huge between like 20 and 35. There's only like 1% that are in their 60s over. So if you're focused on retirement people, you wouldn't use Instagram. If you're focused on the millennials, which are the number one uh, buyers now of homes in America, that it's Instagram. And so... You know, that yeah. is how powerful this is because yeah. where the people are, is it on the phone with you? Is it, uh, you know, in the TV and the newspapers where the people are and where they're looking at you, but you don't know it is the social media. And so that is just fantastic. So yeah, anything, um, uh, so strategic ways to connect with my target audience. Um, is there... Other, is there some things, because we're going to actually get in and you're going to show us some examples here to get into the meat, but anything else before we get into the meat of it? <laughs> well, I, I think just supporting the comment that you made is that it's, it is really important to know where your target market lives and, uh, and then, you know, really just invest in that particular social platform mm -hmm. because a lot of people will just be on all of them and think that that's where they need to be. Mm. Um, and you're just not going to be reaching the community that you want to be reaching yeah. and, and knowing again, strategically how to use them so that you can get in front of that market. Um, you know, and, and again, if your market is the senior citizen, maybe you're getting them into their last home or yeah. helping them uh, sell that last home. Mm. Um, then, you know, craft your message speaking to them. Mm -hmm. Use those words like, are you a da 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 da? Are you struggling with da 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 da? You know, all of that because that's, they're gonna, there's so much content out there. Yeah, fantastic. And fantastic. storytelling is great too. Oh, okay. okay. And, and by storytelling, like a, a actual real estate story on, hey, I helped, you know, retire Absolutely. couple or I helped these millennials or whatever. And so, to yeah share your stories. So think about stories. And one of the ways to do that is to ask. And so it's asking God, the universe, whatever words you want to use, that you basically ask and you shall receive. So start asking for, hey, I would like to have stories. And then the universe, God, will bring you these stories, these good stories in order. Yeah. You know, and like Karen, before we started, we just called on our angels to come up with this and like, yeah. wow, you know, it's just incredible. So um, I'd like to get into the meat if we can. And uh, could you show us, maybe show us one of the things you did on mine just to, because you really, yeah. like I say, I, I was, you know, uh, uh, old dirty piece of uh, brass <laughs> metal or something. No, no. As far as the social media was concerned. But can you share your screen with us then and, uh, and show us something that you have, uh, some of my work and then a, a real estate agent and some things you did. And then I want to talk a little about hashtags too. So can you do all that? 